this is Point of View. I'm Mark Leishman, and Zest Biotech is the company we're talking about. We've got Nathan about a singer, and this company has got this amazing new product. How do you use it? Is it a spray or yeah, what? Biozest is a spray, and when you apply it on pasture, it um, reduces stress in the pasture, so it's more productive, and um, it also is more palatable. And when the ruminant animal eat it. The uh, bioactive compound that we have uh, boosted um, attaches to the protein and makes it more efficient so that um, you get more milk and meat rather than being wasted as urea, methane and nitrous oxide. So how did you come up with this, this idea? The basic thing is that uh, ruminants are so inefficient they are only converting 25% of pasture protein and uh, carbohydrate to milk and meat. And 75% goes out as urea uh, and methane and it's wasted. Um, so when we set up <coughs> um, Indigo Limited, that was our, our targets, those inefficiencies to improve them so we get more product rather than waste, which then pollutes the, the environment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is extremely topical at the moment, isn't it? And very good timing, I would suggest, because, you know, that's what we're on the lookout for. We've got to somehow cut down the, the nitrogen and uh, yeah. you know, methane and everything. And fortunately for us, um, the UNFAO mm -hmm. got involved um, very early in the pace, you know, when they had their Kyoto Protocol. And they brought scientists together, just like they did with the um, uh, Human Genome Project, mm. to work on these problems and feed in all the information so that it's shared really well. So since 2003, they've been publishing some options that farmers can take to reduce both you know, their in environmental footprint as well as um, the uh, greenhouse gases. And just recently in 2000, oh, this year in February, they published just for the um, uh, dairy industry itself a 30 over page uh, information. Uh, plus, they gave options of what we can take up. And f uh, we've been following this and working exactly to the sort of requirements. Uh, the for, for the for the testing and things like that, and fortunately, we did finish all our work um, just a year ago, and uh, now in a position to really fully market it. Right. So, what sort of I guess R and D do you do? I mean, what sort of development? Uh, um, how do you know it's working? Um, have you got test farms, or what happened? What has happened in the past is that they've done laboratory tests as well as in small cages and so on. And FAO found that it doesn't translate um, as in a farm yeah. because the cows don't eat all the time yeah. and um, they don't. Um, um, burp and fart all the time and not the same intensities and things like that. So measuring in a very small sort of scale didn't translate too well. So they recommended all trials got to be done at full cycle yep. and out in the farm. Yep. So what we were fortunate is that we were able to produce enough product to supply the farmers we were doing trials with mm. to do that. Mm. Of course, initially you do the uh, split block trials within the farm. Mm. One paddock is treated and yeah, the other not. not, and so on. Then you scale it up to do um, a farm owned by the same farmer. Mm. Uh, so he's treating both farms the same way, and just one farm get treated and yep. the other doesn't. So we've done that. That's why it's taken such a long time yes, yes. to get here. Because even if you took, for example, um, drought, I mean, you can set up a trial to do drought. It might not be a drought here. Yeah. So you've got to wait uh, until it happens. Yeah. Um, have you? I mean, have you had a great reaction from the farmers who have been trialing it? Classic example is a farmer sprayed it on his um, bale. 
um, building paddocks. Yes, yeah. And they increased it more than twice the Production. number of bales. Really? You know. And when you look at the paddock, it might not look as though it's got double the amount of mm -hmm. uh, bales. But if you look closely, push away the, the pasture, and you see no, not much gap between the plants. Yeah. So it's denser, you know, yeah. and that sort of thing, and it really gets them excited because they've never seen that yeah. sort of performance. How often do you have to spray it? With dairying, um, because it's so intensive, what we're recommending is you've got to put two sprays very close together because that's how the immune systems are, are triggered. But once you do that, and after every grazing, we are recommending the spray. But as you know, in farming, sometimes you do miss, you know, and it's okay. Right? Um, but the first two sprays are quite important, and then to follow up with each. In um, dry stock farming, they only have to spray uh, at the beginning of each season, so they got four sprays. Right. How do you see the, the uh, future of pastoral farming? They're talking about growing trees now and not farming so much, um, yeah. which will destroy communities. But anyway, that's another yeah. story. For um, pastoral farming in New Zealand, we've got a closed cycle, economic cycle. Mm -hmm. And what we know is that the pasture, our pasture, blocks up carbon more than forestry. Mm -hmm. Right? And here's a product like uh, Biozes, which is increasing, doubling it. Yeah. So we're going to even um, uh, clock up more of yeah. the carbon dioxide. Yeah. The other area is that we're going to increase productivity. Uh, I'm sure our farmers will reach the 37% target FAO is talking about yeah. quite easily. Yeah. If we reach that, we're not only um, going to be able to uh, give an assurance of food security, um, but also uh, have much more revenue into the country. So how do you get your message across to, uh, to farmers to, to, to buy this product? Yeah, we've we, we got to make a lot of noise, I yeah. think, to raise above the sort of um, popular belief that is out there that there is no technology. And also, if we try to reduce greenhouse gases, um, farming going to be wrecked. Um, that is not true, of course, you know, from what FA has written and what we're doing. That um, actually the problems are due to inefficiency. We're going to increase productivity. And if we increase productivity, there'll be less waste less problem. Yeah, yeah. Nathan Ballasingham, the uh, BioZest is what you've got to remember and uh, check it out uh, through their website as mentioned and uh, we wish them all the very best. And that's our point of view for another week. Uh, join you next week for another.